Out of the ice comes the fire. Out of the ice of winter, the fire of autumn. Out of the emptiness come the echoes. For a new coach in his first year, echoes of other years, other coaches. Of Paul Bear Bryant winning his first college games with the University of Maryland football team. Of Jim Tatum building powerful nationally ranked teams and with one of them winning a national championship for the University of Maryland. Of Jerry Claiborne winning conference championships with defense and conservative ball control offense. It begins with echoes. I greatly believe in, in Jerry Claiborne from having worked with him, but I am Bobby Roth and will establish my philosophies as to what I believe in in that area. Offensively speaking, I believe in a pro attack. It begins with belief. I strongly believe in the concept of the student athlete. It begins with passion. <laughs> For Bobby Ross, it begins. A new season. A season for building with little known place. A new team. A season for tackling with passion and purpose. The best college teams in the country. A season for waking up out of the emptiness of winter. Echoes of the fall. come from hill towns like Hancock and Hagerstown, from the uplands, from the high country. They come from tie water towns like Tillman Island and Kent Island and Chesapeake Beach. They come from Baltimore, Annapolis and Washington. They come for the echoes. They come for the beginning. Coaches begin with place. The Bobby Ross era begins with students who would be athletes also, who would be linemen and linebackers, tackles and guards, wide receivers and running backs. Students who would go with their private gifts, their strength, their skill, their spirit into the public arena, who would test themselves in the toughest game in college sports. For Boomer Esiason, quarterback, a special pressure. It's kind of frightening to hear all these people screaming and yelling in there at the top of their lungs, and you're wondering, you know, how are they going to accept me today? For Mike Corvino, captain, a special pleasure. I get goosebumps for thinking of running out onto the field. That's where, where the awe of it all takes place. For all of them, one purpose, a first win for the new coach. We lost the first two games by just mistakes on our part. Not, we, we never got soundly beaten by anybody. He never let us get down on ourselves. That's what made him special to us. And that made us all realize that we had, a, first of all, a special coach, a special man that came in and took over. Let's go, Mike. Let's go. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Ronnie, let's go. Ronnie, I got you. Let's go, Lenny. Mike, Vince, let's go. John, Craig, let's go. Pete, right, let's go to work. Let's go. Right from the very beginning. Come on. Right from the very beginning. Good luck. Good luck. Right from the very beginning. Now, let's go. Let's go. Right from the beginning, Mike. Let's go. and captains into the arena onto the testing ground. From all over the state they come, students and faculty, fans and more fans, to the celebration and spectacle that is college football. 
to the pageantry and pandemonium that is Bird Stadium on a Saturday afternoon. Now, as always, Maryland football begins with base, with defense, with a wide tackle six, with Gurness Brown, the muscle of Mark Tudor, the heart and skill of Mike Corvino. Today, North Carolina State and start of the Atlantic Coast Cup, one of the toughest college conferences in the country. All right, be ready for pressure. Now, under Bobby Ross, a wide open offense, a complex multiple set offense led by a left-handed quarterback. An offense for the long pass and the ball control pass. An offense for every place on the feet and for every play. For the fullback and the tailback. For the tight end and the wide receiver. An offense for multiple formations, shifting formations, for running and passing. Well, we'll see where we go on this. An offense for the unpredictable. And for Willie Joyner, football on fall afternoons is part of a larger, longer season, the college year. And Bird Stadium is part of a larger field, the College Park campus of the University of Maryland. A campus is another kind of field, a testing ground and growing ground, a field alive with faculty and students from every state and dozens of countries a field alive with other challenges and other opportunities. For those who would seize them, College Park offers unusual opportunities, opportunities like Washington, D.C., 10 miles away. For Mike Lewis, a wide receiver on Saturday, a communications major on Monday, College Park meant a chance to work as a student intern with professional reporters covering politics and law in the nation's capital. The single most important ingredient is their character, what kind of people they are. We want to continue to, to have people of character within our program, uh, people who have a sincere interest in an education. They want to get their education. They want to uh, go on in life and be successful beyond what their football career brings them. For Mike Lewis, a season for growth. For a team with a reputation for defense, for head-knocking, body-breaking defense, for fundamental football. A coach with a reputation for imaginative, wide-open, high-scoring football. With great coaches come great players. For Maryland in the modern era, a parade of All-Americans, and a tradition of sending great defensive players to the National Football League. Players with the quickness of Neil Ogilwick, middle linebacker for the Washington Redskins.
players with the speed and light-fingered skill of a Lloyd Barrett. Strong safety for the Kansas City Chiefs. For Barrett, the Maryland years brought both strength and the confidence to you. The weight program, the conditioning program here at Maryland, I found that, you know, being strong and being able to use my body more efficiently really helped me, gave me an edge over my opponent. I found myself out there on the wide receiver. I could just throw him around, you know. He would, or him trying to run circles around me just wouldn't work because I'd try to knock his head off, and most of the time I would do that. From that tradition of defense came the legend of Randy White, defensive tackle for the Dallas Cowboys, a Maryland All-American an all-pro nearly every year, and the most valuable player of the Super Bowl. As far as the, uh, the line play at the University of Maryland, it's, it's really uh, prepared me quite a bit uh, for, for pro ball, especially with uh, the Dallas Cowboys, because we play uh, University of Maryland, they play techniques and they play keys, and it's the same type of uh, defense we use here with the Dallas Cowboys now. So, you know, that, that really helped me and gave me a, a jump uh, coming into pro football. Down, down, 48 sweeps. Down, 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 down. All right, come on. Sit. 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 For the Maryland Terrapins, a coach out of the Kansas City Chiefs. A coach with an offense out of the Dallas Cowboys and the Atlanta Falcons, the New England Patriots, and the Los Angeles Rams. And I broke their offense down into about 13 to 15 different categories and, and studied it quite closely. And, and out of it, I came away with a very clear-cut feeling that there are certain things that you have to have in an offense. Multiple formations, uh, shifting in motion, a real balance of run to pass, and a high degree of unpredictability. Uh, we have put those things into our offense. Can college players handle a pro-style offense? Can a college quarterback handle an offense designed for Roger Starbuck? Under Carolina skies came the answers. Answers like the long pass and footballs falling like sudden rain out of the cloudless sky. Against the North Carolina Tar Heels, answers like the rollout and the flamboyance of Boomer Asaya. The field goal and the consistency of Jeff Atkinson. Answers like the red and white, the black and gold of Maryland fans in the field of blue. Maryland music, Maryland cover. Against the toughest rushing defense in the nation. Answers like the run, the off tackle slant, and the pitch up. Is like the jauntiness of a willy drunk. The drive and determination of a Dave Daddio. But most of all, the magic of Willie Joint. With Maryland down, he ran 55 yards. With Maryland down again, he ran 49 yards. With the world watching, with a game on the line, with a goal line at his back, he ran and ran. And then he ran again. He ran into history. Against the strongest line, he gave his greatest game. He ran and ran and ran. 16 catch, 240 yards, the greatest running day in Maryland football history. 
for Joyner, a magic death. For all of them, running back and blocker, a day to echo down the decade. Against the best, be bold. Against the best, be magic. After hard work and teamwork, self-sacrifice and self-discipline, the moment of magic that makes men believe in themselves, the moment of grace, the moment of fire that can lift players to another level, that can lift them out of themselves into a community of love, commitment, and belief. From a coach who can lead, players who can lead. This is a pretty awesome experience, I'll tell you. <laughs> Mike Corvino, defensive lineman, captain. I guess the first pep rally we had, um, one of the things we said to you was we were very thankful for all your support. Uh, it started with the first game with Penn State when everybody was satisfied that we played well. And it went along with, no, 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 I saw him, see? Now you're on the same level as us. We want to win. Now we both want the same thing. Dave Fasella, lineman, captain. They got about 5,000 people coming up here that say they can out cheer, out cheer the University of Maryland. They say, they say that Maryland can't cheer, but i tell you what, tomorrow when they come up here, we'll show them something different. What do you say? You go out there and you out cheer them out there in, in the stands, and we'll kick your butt all over the field. Out of energy comes energy. Out of a coach who can fire his place, players who can fire their fans, who can lift them to another level, who can lead them back to the fire that is football. Competition comes Paris. Against Penn State in West Virginia, North Carolina and Duke. Against Miami, the character of the Maryland football team takes shape. Down 17 to 7. Down to the last quarter. Down to the last minute. Down to last play. And the long shadows of a Saturday afternoon. Down to courage. The comeback begins. They come back with the combativeness of a Bobby Ross. They come back with the boldness of Boomer Esiason and the pass blocking of Pastella and Gluck, Tomasetti and Pike, Lynch and Salt. with a junior quarterback and a freshman running back. With a head-busting running of a Rick Bedanic. It begins as play. Boys at dusk on an empty field, a city street, reaching for a ball in the dreaming sky. Here it becomes something else. Here on a field crowded with crisis, a game becomes a gateway. And through it, they came as one, the freshmen and the juniors the sophomores and the seniors.
young men at dusk on a hectic field, reaching for a piece of the roaring sky. For Jeff Atkinson, the unrecruited kicker, the sophomore, an early chance at heroism. For all of them, a sudden soaring into the national ranks. again with the courage and competitiveness that are the true marks of this passionate team. They came back with defense. They came with an offense that could strike from anywhere on the field with a long pass. Competition comes character. Out of victory, out of defeat. Out of Penn State and Miami, Carolina and Clemson and Washington. The real character of the Maryland football team took final shape. The Maryland football team came of age as the comeback team of the Atlantic Coast Conference. As the team whose time is coming. A team coming back to greatness. chorus that season, and then in Virginia, in Scott Stadium, they sang one more word. For the Maryland football team in its first year under a new coach, a winning season, national ranking, a trip as an East Coast football power to the first annual Aloha Bowl. Bobby Ross, Coach of the Year for the Atlantic Coast Conference. For Boomer Esiason, new school records for passing. For other players, other achievements, Coach Bobby Ross. What I want a player to get out of his, uh, his time in our program is that he comes out of it being a better person. Get out of it in a, a positiveness, a, a self-confidence. Uh, I want them to feel good about themselves. Uh, I want them going away from here feeling as though they've learned something beyond football. I want them going away from here with an opportunity in, in, in life. For all of them, echoes of Bird Stadium and Beaver Stadium, of Keenan Stadium and the Carrier Dome, of Mountaineer Field and the lower state. With their comebacks and their setbacks, they danced in end zones everywhere they went. In their first year with a new office, they were the eighth best scoring team in the country. With the wide tackle six, they were the third toughest rushing deep. For their heartbreak heroic, 
for their electric afternoon in echoing stadiums, save it. They left the autumn air aflame with their burning. For Mike Lewis Sr., this remains. Coach Ross is a good coach because he has the ability to listen, that he has that ability to reach out and touch an individual on the team and to make them realize that they are someone special and a, a job to do in this world. A memory of community, a memory of courage, a memory of magic. When the stadiums empty and the cheers become echoed, for all of them, that remains. When a season for passion becomes a season for memory.